Hey guys, this video is brought to you by .tech Domains. It seems like as programmers, we're always working on some sort of side project, whether it's like a startup, software as a service, or a portfolio site. Picking and finding a domain is actually really, really difficult to do because there's several rules that you should always look at. I mean, the domain should be relevant, it should be short, it should be less than two words, ideally. Also, having the .tech in your domain signifies that you're in technology. So go ahead and join others such as Austin Evans, Consumer Electronics Show, and Viacom when it comes to securing your .tech domain. The link in the description tab below includes a 90% discount. Hey everybody, what up, what up? All right, so in this video, what we're going to be talking about is the top five programming languages to learn in 2021 to get a job without a college degree. Yeah, that's a clickbait title, but honestly, uh, this is what people are interested in, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Now, one thing that should be noted is that um, it goes without saying that if you want to get a web development job, you got to do CSS and HTML. And I'm not even going to mention that, nor am I going to mention SQL. You don't really have to know that. Now, also a thing to note is that this top five list, I really feel like are the like five languages that I would choose from if I were just starting my career right now with the goal of trying to get a job without going to school. Clearly, if you go to school, you can check the box. You're going to get your first opportunity. And from there, you're good to go. But this video pertains to like, how do you separate yourself from the competition, the masses of, of developers that are out there, many of them who have experience, many of them who have degrees, how do you compete against that? Like, how do you get hired? All right, so jumping into this, number five on my list is going to go to Rust. Why do I pick Rust? It, it comes from the people over at Mozilla that are responsible for the Firefox browser. They've been a mainstay pretty much in technology since their existence. Really smart people over there. Rust is designed from the ground up to compete with C++. All the stuff that we use C++ for, the reason why we can't move away from it is because it, it does speed better than even Java or uh, C Sharp. Like when, when you come to game engines, virtual reality, like uh, airplane simulations, all this like crazy stuff, Rust is a systems level language that was built from the ground up to be able to do all that stuff. It's going to take a long time for Rust to get on the same level as C++, but every day we're seeing new Rust libraries that can literally compete with C++ libraries. So the more you see that, um, you know, the more we're going to see Rust in, in the production. So when it comes to actually getting a job, you want to separate yourself from other people. If you're a Rust developer and you actually have Rust code out there that is showing, hey, I know how to do Rust, this and that, look at this thing I built in Rust somebody's going to hire you to write some friggin' HTML and JavaScript. You know what I mean? Like if you go out there and you learn Scala or Haskell or something and you actually learn it. And I say actually learn it because I've looked at all those things and I have not learned it. So it takes some time and, and definitely some dedication. But if you do any one of those things, those languages literally separate themselves from other languages. So you can easily like, you're going to get hired, basically. If you got something to point to to say, hey, I built that in Rust and I wrote it from the ground up, people are going to hire you to write JavaScript. All right, so number four is going to go to Go. And Go and Rust are somewhat inter interchangeable, but I put Go ahead of Rust because I feel like there's more opportunities in Go for jobs. I'm actually seeing Go somewhat explode. Like if you look at literally from like a growth perspective, Go is growing very, very fast in the job market. And it's a rather boring language, but it, it sort of competes with Rust on the same level in the sense that, um, well, not really on the same level, but Go was built from the ground up to be able to, to help out with, uh, really was designed by Google, right? So it was to replace their old and aging C++ infrastructure, uh, as well as a lot of what their Python scripts were, were being used for to tie their architecture together. Basically, all their fast processing was done with C++. All the tying together of servers was Python. They were looking for a language that had the speed of C++ and the ease of development with Python. So Go was created with that in mind. And the other day, I did a video on this uh, framework, this Go Fiber framework. And this thing is incredibly fast. So if you look at the benchmarks, and I understand people say benchmarks are bullshit, but like, they're not entirely bullshit, but if you look at this though, you can see that like it blows away speed um, when it comes to like, if I need to build a static server, why would I use, why would I not use this if it's just a simple static website versus something like uh, spinning up a Node.js instance uh, running Express or something, uh, or even a smaller framework than Express. Th this type of framework from Go, because it was built from the ground up, built with concurrency in mind, 
this thing can handle a tremendous amount of traffic and it, it makes a lot of sense to use go in a lot of places these days and the more that we see these go projects hit the market like with rust the more we're going to see the transition over to that so both of those languages i think that if you can write well in them you're going to be able to stand out and again it also shows that you can pretty much write in other shit too all right so the next one is going to go to dart and the reason why i choose dart over something like um, if you want to compare it to something like kotlin kotlin is great if you're going to do android development it's a, a java jvm java virtual machine language so really uh, it's technically just java bytecode behind the scenes but uh, kotlin is, is a great option if like i said if you're going to do android development but what if you want to do both android and ios the promise of write once run anywhere um, works with flutter and dart better than anything i've seen i have videos on how, how to get it set up literally i think in like 25 minutes i show how to debug on my actual phone an app that i built in flutter and, uh, and it just works right so you write this code it works on android or ios um, react native it, it promises to do the same thing ionic as well uh, but when it comes to those three, I prefer uh, Dart. So if I'm going to do mobile app development and I'm trying to get some mobile apps out there to sh separate myself from the competition, the reason why I say don't use uh, Kotlin if you're an Android uh, or you're trying to do an Android app um, is because you're going to be competing against all the Java Android developers out there, right? There's a ton of them. Uh, Dart and Flutter hasn't been around for all that long, so if you can start pounding out some apps that work in this pl this platform, not only can you deploy to Android, but also to iOS, and that's going to allow you to stand out a little bit more. The same thing with, with iOS is that you have to go Swift, Objective-C, that full route, but it's better to just use one of these things like Dart or React Native, build your apps, get them out there, and get the world to see them. All right, so next one is going to be C++, and th this is going to be a language that does not hold your hand when you compare it to anything that's popular out there like JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, Java, all that crap. Like C++ is not going to hold your hands at all. Like one guy I worked with, he described it as a Ferrari with no brakes. Um, but essentially, like, you know, C++ gives you the ability to do pretty much anything you want, especially when you need speed. Things that have been created in C++ include Node.js, the entire runtime. So all the different frameworks and everything that we now have that run off of Node.js, everything from like NPM, all that stuff, that was all created with C++. Game engines are commonly created in C++, physics engines, everything. Uh, things like Unreal Engine um, are created in C++. Software applications like Photoshop, if you need to build something like Photoshop, you can't do this in a browser yet. It, it's... We're slowly getting to those capabilities, but something like this still needs hardcore speed and processing. And for that reason, they're using C++. So like I mentioned with the other languages, if you can write C++, it means that you can write Java or C Sharp. And you're going to find probably those languages a lot easier than even C++. C++ kind of separates the, the coders from the non-coders, or at least the masses of, of coders that are just kind of moderate. If you're a, a good C++ programmer, you're, you're going to be a good programmer, basically. So it, you're going to be able to find a job. And that's really the point. Like, you could go out there and you could spend all your time trying to learn Python or something, but all the jobs are in data science. And you're not really going to separate yourself from anybody who has a degree, right? Um, a lot of the Python stuff is kind of beginner-friendly, Python Flask, Python Django, that stuff can separate you a little bit, but you know C++ is a completely different category compared to those languages. All right, and number one on my list is going to go to JavaScript, and it's a rather boring uh, number one, but honestly, th this thing has the most jobs, and I've said it before, it's because JavaScript's the only language that runs in the browser. Even now, you could point to WebAssembly, but we're not there yet. And until something else is running inside of the browser, then JavaScript is going to be king because pretty much all business, everything we do, whether it's on a cell phone or our desktop device, we're connecting via HTTP internet protocols, which means we're using browsers and we're using JavaScript. JavaScript is the number one language on GitHub. So when it comes to actually getting a job, um, the more projects that you can tap into that you can maybe contribute to, you don't even have to write code for some of these projects. You can get your name associated with some of these JavaScript projects on GitHub. 
by simply doing code uh, pull requests for uh, things like you know spell checks and image uh, uh, consolidation or just uh, image uh, minification or whatever. If you you know using even different types of image formats, like you have different repositories and stuff that are pointing to like JPEG images, why not update them to a WebP? See if the project is uh, interested in doing that. You get your name on that kind of stuff. But the point is, is like there's a ton of code in JavaScript. And there's endless possibilities to, to tap into it. So you have all these frameworks like uh, React, Angular, Vue on the client side. You have all the terminology, like I said, with Ajax and Promises and all these different things. Um, you have things like Babel and TypeScript. I kind of keep TypeScript in the same category as JavaScript. I think those are kind of interchangeable, and you kind of have to know both of them. So when I say JavaScript, you probably need to throw TypeScript in there at some point because you're going to run into it in the wild. But when it comes to getting your name out there, like I said, you guys can start contributing to projects right now. And maybe, um, you know, those languages I just mentioned, like Rust and, uh, and, and, and Go and all that stuff, it's going to take you a long time to get up to speed, especially if you're trying to contribute actual source code to a project that's in existence. JavaScript doesn't have nearly the learning curve. So I think there's a way more opportunity to just jump into JavaScript. Like, really, if you guys ask me, how do I get a job, Chris? Honestly, you could throw out this entire list and just say JavaScript and focus on that. So if you really just want one language, just focus on JavaScript if you're trying to get a job as quickly as possible. If you want to future-proof yourself, you've got a couple years to learn code. Honestly, if it were me, I would go with like Rust or Golang, and I would try to be an expert in one of those things. So that way, you know, three years from now, I'm just as well off as some of these seniors who are you know, transitioning over to these languages slowly as they become more... Uh, robust and filled out all right so that's my list let me know what uh what you all think out there please uh leave a comment a like subscribe i appreciate all that stuff um, but i'm really curious what your opinion is so just make sure you drop that that and let me know all right bye